A few months ago, a movie called My Old Ass hit theaters. Unfortunately, I was unable to get to it in the limited run it had. Fortunately, if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's already free to stream. I mean, it's free, you're paying for it, but still, it's there. So now you too can watch this coming of age story about an 18 year old who trips balls and starts talking to her old ass 39 year old self. I'm 41, so imagine how that makes me feel. Old. All right, let's talk about this movie quick in a spoiler free review. Before I talk about this movie, my future self just showed up. Still a absolutely stunning Adonis of a man. He says, yep, you should subscribe to this channel. He's telling me I'm gonna have a million subs by the time I'm his age. He's 150 years old. But please do it anyways, and hit the notification bell so these show up in your feed more often. I would appreciate it. Thanks, future Adam. Still got it. My old ass is an easy breezy R-rated hour and a half movie. Oh, I just love that beautiful chef's kiss. Hour 29 even. And that's with credits. So really, in and out in an hour and 27. And thankfully, this movie makes good use of that time. For me, around the hour mark, it did start to kind of tread a little water and lose its way. But thankfully, it all comes back around at the end. And I really enjoyed this film. This film was written and directed by Megan Park. I'm not really familiar with her work, but I'm gonna start keeping an eye on future stuff because here she does a great job directing. And it's a movie that's got some genuine heart and laughs. It's a, it's a hard thing to balance, it seems like in 2023, 2024, but she did it. And I think what really helps the script are the two leads. Elliot, played by Maisie Stella, and older Elliot, played by Aubrey Plaza. And I want to give a special shout out to Aubrey Plaza and her agent, whoever is finding her these projects. They're really making great use of her time. She's not in this film that much, kind of like she wasn't in Agatha all along very much, or the other films I've recently seen her in. So she's getting a solid payday, and she's not having to be there that long. Which, unfortunately, is a bit of a con, because I do enjoy her scenes. I think she's a very funny actress. It would have been nice to get a few more moments where they're bouncing dialogue off of each other. Because every time both Elliots are in the room, there's some fun interactions going on. That said, Maisie Stella does a very good job on her own holding this thing together. Interacting with her quirky family, interacting with some of her friends, balancing her relationships. And that's really the crux of the film. Let's get a, a quick overview of the story. So Elliot heads out for a nighttime mushroom gathering with her two friends. They start hallucinating, dancing, and singing, but Elliot not quite having the same effect. Instead, her future self shows up, they start having a dialogue, and some key pieces of information are shared. Now, you can think to yourself, well, why the hell did she not press her future self further? Really dive into some of the intricacies of her future, not even intricacies, just basic things, like, where am I gonna live? Am I gonna have any kids, a husband, a wife, whatever. She tries, but I felt like it wasn't pushed very hard. But it also doesn't really matter. The how she appears, the why, the when. This is all unnecessary. It's just to drive the story and the messaging, which is to really hang on to your youth. Don't take it for granted. Make mistakes. Love who you love be who you want to be, and understand that as you get older, you're gonna look back and have regrets, but also realize that things were not so bad. In fact, quite the contrary. There are also hints about a future that's perhaps not so great, as Aubrey Plaza mentions a few times during conversations, both in person and in text. Now, you could rewatch this and probably gather a little bit more intel from some of the vague things she says here and there. And since it once again is only an hour and hour and a half, it's, it's, it's easy for rewatch. From a visual standpoint, it's doing everything it needs to. It looks great. The setting's beautiful. A lot of lake shots on the boat, a lot of beautiful vistas of the tree lines. It, it's getting it all correct. The music's also wonderful outside of a Justin Bieber tribute song, which, oof, that. That's the one scene in the movie I was not having. I was ready to fast forward, but we, we held our own. We watched. Actually, my wife said, fast forward this now. And I said, hang on, hold your course. We're not fast forwarding this movie. It's already short enough. But outside of that one bump in the road, I think it's pretty easy sailing. 
Now, this is a personal pet peeve of mine, one that most will ignore completely, except for now that I'm bringing it up. Um, I used to have a literally counter. This was a couple years back. I thought we were over this in Hollywood. Apparently, <laughs> apparently not when it comes to this film. The amount of times our actress says literally in this thing is, is absolutely disgusting. Uh, I think the count got up to six or seven in an hour and a half movie. That's unacceptable. All right. Uh, I don't I don't need to hear that word anymore as long as I live. It's abused. It's misused, and I'm done with it. I'm, I'm over it. The last thing I'll point out is I did find the story as it's going pretty predictable as how it was gonna play out, but even though I was fairly confident where it was gonna go, it still stuck the landing for me. I found, I found some salty discharge coming out of the sides of my eyes. I looked over, my wife was a mess. It is a tearjerker. If you have any sort of a pulse, I think you'll appreciate some of the emotions, some of the heartstrings being pulled. Yeah, again, not much to say. I enjoyed it. I think it's uh, I think it's worth watching. I think uh, I think you'll have an okay time with this one. If you like the more emotional type of films, no, there's no action here. There's no explosions. It's just kind of a sweeter movie. And I think that's okay from time to time. Maybe pop on John Wick afterwards to, to feel like a man again, if that's something you need to do. But uh, I, I recommend this one. It was a nice, wonderful surprise I wasn't expecting. Let me know for me though. I wanna hear if you saw this movie, if you if you watched it in theaters and you're like, hey Adam, thanks for, thanks for showing up. Like the video if you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews all the time, not just the big blockbusters. Obviously I'm hitting a lot of stuff that goes to streaming as well. Just reviewed a film called Meet Me at Christmas. It's a Netflix stream. Oh man, that was uh, that was atrocious. But I talked about that movie, so obviously I'm uh, I'm really getting down into the dirt, trying to find the good ones for you and sharing the bad ones along the way. All right, if you love what I'm doing and you appreciate the hustle, maybe think about supporting the channel on Patreon at Patreon.com/AdamDoesMovies. I just put up a V for Vendetta commentary with uh, my buddy Tony over at Hack the Movies where we go through that entire movie and get sidetracked about a million times on other films. It's a really fun time. A lot of perks over there, over 300 exclusive videos. That number bumps up every single month. Would love the support. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.